Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Sparks Entertainment and Art, the YouTube show about Sparks and their fans and the intense relationship a lot of the fans have with the band. Of course, as you know, and I've said before, we're going to talk about many other things, but that's going to be where we're going to be at. That's where we're going to be going today because we are talking with Leslie Miller. And Leslie Miller is a died in the wool Sparks fan. Uh, <laughs> she is the the uh, purveyor, the person in charge of Leslie Miller's art studio. And as you can see from those amazing pictures in the back, uh, she she puts her money where her mouth is. Uh, she puts up, you know, she does some great pictures, and she is a dedicated fan with a wonderful story. So, Leslie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and it's so. Uh... I was thrilled that day that you said, how would you like to do the show? And I said, oh, of course, yes, by all means. And after all my end of the technical problems were ironed out, by then, uh, it's all good to go. Yes, I am a longtime Sparks fan, as most a lot of people are. It probably goes back to the propaganda era. And uh, I found the album album back in the days before all the other things came along uh with a friend of mine in a shopping mall and well, i, I, I want to get to that but first i want to hear your story why don't you tell people about who you are and and the great oh, work that you do oh, okay, and, which you. i know kept you busy all weekend too oh yes uh yes i am an artist and uh, i do have leslie miller's art studio up and i'm still working out the bugs because technical end i'm still kind of new to it all and I do, like like he pointed out, these are just examples since where our subject matter is on Sparks. And I just got through and uh, Monty kind of kept up with it as well with a two-day art event down at our local rec hall and uh, in Stephenville, Texas, which is where I'm from. And uh, the event went well and it was amazing. I hadn't been out in about 15 years. And so the event went well. I teach children, I teach adults, and it's just been a wonderful journey. I kind of went into retirement hiding, I guess you might call it, for a long time. And I had a friend of mine by the name of Dina, who sells jewelry, and she, uh, I was on her site, she's got a paparazzi site, and she said, Leslie, you need to get back into this. And uh, I was reluctant, and uh, finally after she got after me a little bit, and I said, I don't drive. And she said, oh, no problem. We're going anyway. So just throw your stuff on the back of the pickup and we'll go. And so I got out of my shell that way. And I got on my shell, which will be a story later on, uh, due to something that happened this summer. And uh, anyway, it's just been a wonderful journey. I've probably painted or drawn since I was a little kid. And I was fortunate enough to have a mother and a father who realized and understood that, oh, maybe I'm a little different than an artist. I think with our band, our guys back here, Sparks, right. they could all tell you all about that one. And anyway, mother said, okay, uh, she's gravitating towards art. So at a very early age, even about four or five, uh, she shut me off a side corner and I started my drawing and just took off from there. I've had many lessons and many college courses in the field of drawing, art history, oil paintings, watercolors, which is all that I touch on, and a little bit of your craft areas like your batiking, and, and I've even done a touched on stained glass a little bit, but my main is oil and watercolors and oil and water, excuse me, and conti chops, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I've been able to go to your website, which we will reference here and see your art. It's wonderful. And, you know, and I know that uh, the fellows behind you are part of the story, too, in terms of your art. But we're going to get to that. But first, my understanding is that it was the propaganda album that and you kind of hinted at this a minute ago, that it was the propaganda album that got you into Sparks in the first place. How did that happen? Well, uh I was in a store and I picked up the album Propaganda and I miscalculated the date. It was probably a little later into the latter 70s or, or early 80s, but I had heard of them anyway. And uh, But uh, I did pick that up having vaguely 
heard of them, but not really familiar with them. And I took it on a chance because of that kooky <laughs> deal with the boat and the going across the lake or ocean or wherever they are being tied up. I thought, what is this? And so I picked it up, played it, and it was love at first listen. I really liked the whole thing all the way through. So so some people, they people often say, it took me a while to get used to Sparks, and then I really came to appreciate them. But you heard it, and you said, I love this. Yeah, I loved it. It was right off the bat. Of course, my my friend probably had other questions in her head, but she yeah. she came to like them too. <laughs> well, that well, that's good. That's a common story too. Those problems with those friends. But um, what can you could you put into words what it was that you heard? And also, were there some specific songs that just immediately uh, got into your memory? Oh my goodness! I think the ones that usually, uh, I just like the way they just snap to, you know, uh, with with uh, an instant grabber of energy, full energy, little quirky harmonies and things like that, and it opened and then it went into the immediate rock number and just pounded away and all this, and then they backed off to other things, and then was one came the lyrics. Yeah. And I listened and I went. Oh my goodness, this is not the usual fair. I mean, at first, of course, everybody's tendencies will kind of chuckle or laugh or whatever. And and I got I got tickled and I went, wait a minute, there's something more behind these guys. Yes. Uh, that that meets the meets the eye, you know, or the ear. Which and there I, stood stood out to you. Yeah, and so I thought, uh I, I, when I get home from my friend's house, I'm gonna study this a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, and that's what it was. And then of course I backed up and got come on in my house right away when I and anything else I could grab my hands on yeah. <laughs> at the time and then pushed it forward. And I had a very understanding boyfriend at the time who always gifted me with Sparks rec records at the time and all yeah. this. And so that was really great. Yeah. We're, we're now are there a couple songs from that album that you still think of as these are the ones that have I'll never. That will stay with me forever. Oh my goodness, that is such an open question because I could like something or go back and think of something one day and then it is switch. It's totally a new tune. I said, Oh yeah, that one and this one. Yeah. I I, I don't have a particular niche I go in with, with these guys. Now, if you were to say the Beatles or something like that, right. yeah, here, there, and everywhere and and things like that, or my goofiness with I want to hold your hand when I was a teenager and stuff like yeah. that. But well, uh, the Beatles, they have enough of their own podcast shows and all that. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that's but great. These guys, these guys were different. Yeah. And that's great. And that's very similar to my experience. I saw them on TV doing songs from propaganda. And I there said, you go. There's something going on here. And then I decided to go back a little bit. And I really love what you said about hey, it was I looked at the lyrics, I could see how much more there was in depth. And I think one of the themes in this that intrigues me that I'm going to explore on this show is the duality. There's so many dualities in everything about them. And, you know, here they were a pop band uh, selling, you know, big records in the UK, where at the same time, they had these intense lyrics that really revealed a lot, you know, and got you thinking, right? Oh, yes, it did. Because, well... I don't know about other places, maybe in bigger cities or something like that. But in Stephenville, Texas, it's it's still a relatively small town, but it was even smaller. You had downtown and basically not much else except for a college. And it just barely went into being a full college. And it was a junior college at first. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you're in the middle of Texas somewhere. Where are you going to find stuff on Sparks? What are the chances? How did you find the album in, in Steamville, Texas? I was with a friend in Waco, and there there it was. There it was in the in the uh, bargain bin, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a ton of my Sparks albums in the bargain bin over the years. Yeah, and and I just took a chance. I, I really, like I said, I might have been familiar with a couple of things that they did, but I guess I wasn't paying attention, or they didn't get enough airplay where I am. And, and so, therefore... I just relied on that. I went, I think I've kind of heard of these guys, but I'm going to chance it and take it home. Yeah. So, Dallas? Yeah. May we start?
to see them in austin this on this last tour right this was the first time you saw them right it was in dallas in dallas yes, yes in dallas yes and it was at texas theater and it was 110 degrees that day and it was an indoor one but such as general admission concerts go per se everybody wants to be there early it was a general admission concert yes it was and uh, anyway, uh, my friend Christy, bless her heart, I, I don't drive like I've told you. And so anyway, she volunteered to take me. And this was back in February. He says, oh, I'm going to have a trouble going and all this. He says, I will. I'll volunteer. And she said, who's Sparks? She didn't know who they were. Mm -hmm. But I said, oh, well. And I tried to give her some clips. I said, this just does not describe them in the fast amount of time I'm trying to do it. So you got to really take your time with them if you're going to get into them. And so she said, no, oh, I'm game. I'm going. And so anyway, I uh, I said, okay. She said, I'll, I've already bought a ticket for whoever takes me. And so fast forward it to July, and it was 110. And anyway, we drove around, and Chrissy said, oh, my goodness. But she's, she's the, what you call, the planner, and she had a bunch of water, fans, you name it, uh, to ward off some of the heat. And we were under the shade of an awning. And uh, I got there about an hour and 20 minutes early, 110 degrees. I passed out four times. Amazing. Before I even got in to see them. Mind you, I had waited, what was it, 50 some odd years to see these guys. Mm -hmm. And in the back of my head, Christy told me later, says, I swear it was that perseverance of that thing back in your head saying you got to get up and go see them <laughs> that, that pulled you through and made you go to the other side. I don't remember out the other four times. Yeah. Twice outside. Did, you, did Christy think of just taking you home? Uh I think Christy knew better. <laughs> so what did you think of the show? And anyway, I got in there, I don't remember. And the last time I went out on the floor, I just remember looking up at the ceiling and seeing the lights. I didn't know where I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know who Sparks were. But that changed. And that changed. And she said, you got to get up. I said, oh, yes. And that scrambled me to my feet. Paramedics came and my vital signs were better than before. And I went in and she says, I'm going to get some chocolate. And she pumped me full of chocolate. And I danced two hours the whole time. Loved it. Loved every minute. Was enthusiastic because Texas did not have the best reception in the world with Sparks early years. And I right. looked around. I just had to stop and look around, see the crowd. Yeah, I still do that at Sparks concerts. It was amazing. I said, "Oh, I wouldn't have thought this back in the '70s and all of this." So, what what was going through your head when that intro music started to play, and then the band starts coming out, and then Ron sits down, and then Russell makes his entrance? Well, through the fuzziness of my head, because I was still a little fuzzy, uh, I thought, "I can't believe I'm here." It was surreal. It was yeah. surreal. I said, we fought everything. Here we are, 50 years. And <laughs> I'm, so finally. Glad. I'm so glad you had a chance to see them. Oh, I am too. It was a thrill of a lifetime for did, me. Absolutely. Did anything stick out at the show? Like, oh my gosh, like like Bon Voyage, which to me was oh, such a yes. wonderful treat. Yeah. Yes, I love that one. And like I said, it was so woven and so, uh, in and so so organized, you know, and yeah. everything was right there. And the sound system was perfect. Everybody, the band behind them was just outstanding. I was as amazed with the band behind them as I was. That's a great band. Brothers. Great and band. Uh, and a little bit of, like you said, Bon Voyage, the, the memories that came back, you know, and all that, on up to the current latte and things like that. They just, just ran the gamut, and I loved it. Yeah, it, Chris, was, it, was, it was a great show. No question about it. Yeah, Christy became a fan. Well... Yeah, I brought a bunch of people and they all became fans. Well, <laughs> it, most of them were my family, which was the greatest thing ever. And then yeah. a couple others. And uh, yeah, it was the, it was like, wow, this, this is what you've been talking about all these years. And there was a guy behind me when I was waiting for Christy to come down with the candy and all that to get my sugar level back up. He was all the way from Australia to Dallas, Texas. Really? 
Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so now we're in the, in the present and uh, I've met, I kind of alluded to this earlier that sparks and your art are intertwined in some ways. And yes, I it is. just want to give you the floor and let you talk about that for a couple of minutes. Okay. Well, uh, actually that kind of trailed back to the, that night's concert, which, which I'm glad you mentioned because now it will make sense. And, uh, I was sitting in the car and after all the commotion and all, all the high of the concert and everything, I got to thinking, well, there was a reason for this. I don't guess I was quite understanding this. And before I saw Sparks, I was kind of down in the dumps on my art. I think everybody goes through that. I'm sure they could tell you all about it and every other artist could too. And uh, anyways, it was just like I said, Christy, says something came to me tonight, says, uh, I just witnessed two guys in their 70s. They had a tough go of it. Most bands, if you're going to make it, will make it when they're young. For the most part, that's the logical process. And they just keep going. And then they began to back off during their so-called retirement years. The opposite was true. These guys all of a sudden took off because of the documentary. And I sat there and witnessed all these fans in Texas where there was nobody that knew who they were. I said, you know what? That got me to thinking about my own art. I said, what the heck am I doing? I said, and I said, Christy, it's time for Leslie to get back into her artwork. And uh, I didn't realize at the time until I got examined that I did have a heat stroke and, and a little concussion from hitting the floor. Of the <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah, so it took about three months for me to kind of get my my mind back to where it's not like the cartoon characters seeing stars. And uh, anyway, I, uh, I got back into my art and everything just recently. And... Uh, it's taken off, thank like uh, a friend of Dina. She helped me out by saying, okay, we're going to the art show. But all that yakking I was doing stems back to Sparks because uh, if I hadn't had that moment of night and realization, I might still be in that funky mood. I might be in that funky mood still. It popped me out of it. So they really have had an influence on your life. Yes. Beyond the music. Yes, the music. Not they personally, of course, but yeah. the, the music. Yes. Well, it is they. I mean, it's the fact that yes. these two guys were still doing this. Oh, He's well, yeah, 78. It was. You're correct, because yeah, and they're doing it. And they were on stage when I realized yeah. what was going on inside of me. Yeah. What a great story. And, and you know, and they uh they don't sit on their laurels either in terms of their art. No. They're always looking for something new. Oh, absolutely. And this this caught me too. I said, look what they've experimented with. Look what they've gone through. Uh, accept it, reject it, the whole nine yards they've been through it. That's a great, incredible, great story. Great story. And uh, the most recent album is one that you're a big fan of. Oh, I, I just loved it because it, it, it told me that they still have that powerhouse of what made me love them to begin with. And I like all, all the things in between, but I think it's like any other music that you listen to. Sometimes you go through phases of liking one era better than the next, especially when somebody's been around a long time. And uh, anyway, it's just like, this is a reflection to me of a rediscovery. Mm -hmm. And actually it happened when a steady drip, drip, drip came out. And I began to realize these guys have gone back to yeah. kind of a core with without, like you said, resting on their laurels. Yeah. Are there a few spark songs or like one and two from their whole catalog that just are extremely meaningful to you? Oh my goodness, that's loaded because I could say something today and wish I hadn't said this. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's on okay. Well, oh my goodness. Oh, I know a story. Yeah, it almost escaped my mind. Uh, like I said, I, I've never been married. Here I am in my 70s, never been married. And so I had a, a funeral request song, and it was called, I Married Myself, and I Am Happy Together. 
Perfect. Yeah, we are happy to get it. Excuse me. Perfect. And I love that one. And uh, and uh, let's see, you're not that well defined is another one. Oh my goodness! Well, I mean, that's that's the centerpiece of the album, I think, in some ways, personally. It hit me like a two by four. Yeah, well, that's that. that's what they've heard their entire career. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I realized, you know what, says after what I went through there and then listening, going back and listening to that, I said, I've got to select that one as the most current one that says says a lot to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that just the lyrics and everything. Another one is uh, it doesn't have to be this way. Yeah. yeah, I see that as the answer to the question, and you're not that well defined. Yeah, they're both kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, and uh, it just you know that it just spoke to me. The album speaks to me too, and, and I'll, I'll say that for another show. But uh, I, I have a lot to say about that album. One of these days, I'm going to lay out my views. If people really want to hear that, if if you want to hear me lay out my views on this album, oh, put it in the comments it. and put it on the uh, Facebook comments and tell me it's what you want to hear. But I'm going to save right. it for now. How about that? Right. Okay. Oh yes. All right. Well, you're one yes. We'll see what other people say. I don't want to be indulgent. I want to keep the focus on people like you. Oh. Oh, yeah. this is this is just wonderful. Any final thoughts? Y'all out there, if you're just tuning in for the first time, go listen to these guys and uh, go through every era because you never know which one will latch on to you. Do it. You'll thank us. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Leslie. This is a wonderful conversation. Oh, it's been a wonderful experience. I've been so excited about it. <laughs> thank you so very much. All right. Well, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for this uh, for this little bit of time and learning about Leslie Miller and her wonderful association with the band we all love. And I will be back soon to get another episode of Sparks Entertainment and Art. This is Monty, signing out.